Hello, and welcome to this class on natural dyeing presented by Plainfield Public Library uh, as part of the teen and adult craft series. We are recording this, and if you have questions, you can put them in the question and answer, and we will be happy to answer them. If you have questions after the session, you can contact the public library at 908-757-1111, extension 112, or email us at ref at plfdpl.info. We also accept chat questions on our website, www.plainfieldlibrary. Dot info. So I'm Jennifer Heiss, and I know a little bit about natural dyeing. And in fact, I did a really big project many years ago on dyeing eggs, but not because dyeing eggs is and other kinds of things is a good way to get started with natural dyeing without investing a lot. We're going to be using natural dyes that are safe for food. Not all natural dyes are safe to, for food. In fact, some of them are kind of hazardous, but we're going to be using three natural dyes in this class. We're going to be using turmeric, ground turmeric. We're going to be using cochineal, and we're going to be using onion skins. Those three dyes can actually get you a wide variety of colors without using any special techniques. And we've tried them on several things. In your kit, you will find some cotton thread, some woolen thread. You will not find an egg. You have to supply the eggs yourself. And some beads. The beads look like this. My sample beads are slightly bigger because that's what I could get at Michael's when I did the samples. And you will also find an envelope with cream of tartar, which helps the dyes stick to some of the other, uh, helps certain dyes stick better to the things we're going to dye. So let me tell you a little bit about dyeing, that is, putting color on things, and then we'll get started. Long before the modern synthetic dyes were developed, people dyed cloth, yarn, food, and other things like bone and wood with naturally occurring substances. Many of them were plant-based, some were animal-based, and some involved minerals or other naturally occurring chemical substances. But not all of these original dyes are safe to use. In fact, many of them are very hazardous and very harsh, have to be handled with care. Some are even poisonous and or really disgusting. Um, indigo, the, color, the natural dye, which is a plant dye that makes your blue jeans blue, it has to be fermented with urine, or rather urea, which is part of urine, to get the color that we think of as denim blue. Um, Fortunately, most people who do natural dyeing at home get their indigo as a pre-fermented product and don't have to ferment things in the backyard. So that's pretty discouraging if you want to experiment with making pretty colors without getting into a hazmat outfit. However, some naturally, I think my cameraman is about to be snarky. However, some naturally occurring dyes are food safe. In fact, some of them are food. And those dyes can be used to play with eggs, yarn, or other things like wood beads that would take up the colors for some quick fun dyeing experiments. However, even the safest foods can cause allergic reactions. So cook with care, because if you're not familiar with something, it might give you an issue. Now, dyed eggs are really strongly linked with Christianity and this season of the year, um, even though this tradition of dyeing eggs in the spring was adopted by early Christians from Zoroastrians in ancient Persia. Um, 
And that was part of their spring celebration, having nothing to do with Christianity. Not everyone feels comfortable dyeing eggs. So we're including some other things to dye in your kit. Some cotton yarn, some hand spun pro, pure wool yarn, pure wool yarn, spun, you either got pure wool yarn that was spun by me or spun by my roommate who's a much better spinner than I am. Um, and some wooden beads. You can also dye feathers with these products. There's enough of each dye stuff that you should be able to dye two eggs as well as the yarns and a bead or at least four eggs. The color results you get will depend on the proportion of the dye stuff. This would be the dye stuff to the items to be dyed, how long the items soak in the dye, microchemicals in your water, and other factors. When dyeing cloth or other fiber, certain chemicals are normally added to the dye bath or applied to the thing being dyed ahead to pre-treat it in order to make the dye chemically bond with the fiber. The most commonly available of those are iron and pickling alum, aluminum potassium sulfate or potassium aluminum sulfate, Iron tends to sadden the color, adding brown and gray tones. Alum, which brightens color, is poisonous and consumed in, you know, even an ounce of alum could poison you. So maybe we want to be real cautious about that. Some people use aluminum pans and just and find that that changes the color. But obviously that's not going to poison you because it's not aluminum sulfate. Um, many recipes call... Those things are called mordants, and many recipes call for mordanting with other metal oxides, which are even more hazardous and have to be handled with extreme care. We won't be doing any mordanting in this project because insofar as these things will stick to the fiber, the eggs, and so forth, they will stick without a mordant. Um, in particular, the onion skins are full of something called tannins, which is if you use tannins in a something that you're dying, that's going to do the more some of the more tink for you. Um, so we don't really have to do that. Um, so we're going to gather together the dye stuffs from our kit, the items to be dyed, our saucepans and containers to dye in, and taking them into the kitchen. You're going to need to use a stove. If you're a teen who hasn't yet allowed to or is not yet confident with a stove or hot things, get an adult to help you with this. Um, and start dyeing. Be sure to cover surfaces that might stain, including your clothes. I'm wearing my um, librarian t-shirt as opposed to my work clothes for this, just for that reason. Um, with newspaper or cloth rags, or I'm cutting, I'm putting cutting boards down to avoid getting the dye stuff on the counter because dye stuffs also stain counters. Do we have anybody coming in? No. Okay. So we're going to do these three simple dyes. We're going to start with turmeric. Turmeric is a spice that you can get at any grocery store, and you can buy it in bulk at, say, an Indian grocery store. Um, for what we're going to do now, we're going to need hot water, and we're going to assume that we have a hard-boiled egg. We could boil the turmeric with our eggs, but um, it's not necessary. And turmeric is so good at dyeing things that it really doesn't actually need to be boiled with the thing you want to dye. Hold on while I get some water and my water boiler and set it to boil. So I'm actually going to use a wide mouth jar. You could use a measuring cup, you could use a bowl. You could use anything that is heat safe because you can't use a plastic container or a plastic bowl um, because you're putting boiling water in it. And you want to use something that will not take up the color because otherwise you'll have a bowl that's stained orange. So what we're going to do, first I'm going to tell you a little bit about turmeric. And then we're going to set up our turmeric dye bath. The dye bath is the combination of the dyeing, the, the, dye, the thing that's got the dye in it and the liquid, okay? Turmeric is a rhizome. It's like kind of like a ginger root. 
It's an underlying underground tuber-like stem of a plant similar to ginger. It's best known as an ingredient in Indian and South Asian cooking. You probably noticed the smell of turmeric when you opened your kit. But it's currently best known as with natural medicine practitioners who believe the curcumin that gives turmeric its golden color is anti-inflammatory. I have no position on that. There are a number of Hindu traditions that include coloring with turmeric, including some of the bright colored powders that are used for the Hindu festival of Holi, sorry, Holi in March. Um, Turmeric, turmeric is also used as an add-in for henna paste for coloring the skin and hair. Um, turmeric was also used to dye hair yellow in the 16th century in Italy. You can get turmeric as a dried powder or, or as a fresh root. We're gonna be using the powder. It gives a saffron yellow coloration and it's it is considered what we call a fugitive dye. That means it will fade over time, even if we use chemicals, mordants, to make the color stick. You can experiment with using small quantities of vinegar or cream of tartar or even alum powder as additions. But for our string, beans, and eggs, we can get a pretty nice color just by putting turmeric powder, turmeric powder into boiling water and soaking things in it. So I'm waiting for my water to boil. You'll notice. You got, a, you got a good quantity of turmeric, but honestly, you don't really need more than say a tablespoon. You got a little bit more than a tablespoon in here. Get my tablespoon measure. I'm gonna put a heaping tablespoon in my jar. You can put more if you like, you can save it. Um, it will not dissolve. So you're gonna have a turmeric colored sludge in the bottom of your container. While we're waiting for the boiling to finish, let me just show you the things I've already dyed with turmeric. This is a yellow string. Yellow, this is cotton. This is a 85% cotton, 15% polyester string. And you can see that it took up the color really well. I actually left the string in it overnight. This is a wooden bead. Again, took up the color beautifully, bright yellow. This one I took out a little earlier. I actually took it out after about an hour. My egg is a little squished, um, but you can see there's a beautiful yellow and it gets that beautiful yellow very quickly. So having put our tablespoonful of turmeric in our container, going to get our boiling water. And again, please be careful. This is, not, it's not worth burning yourself. I'm going to put, let's see, I need enough to cover my egg. So I'm going to put about two cups of water in my jar. Then I can float my eggs in here. Again, being careful not to burn myself. I can, unfortunately, I seem to have left my, uh, my cotton thread at work. So we're actually just going to put some more of the homespun wool in there. You can see it's a little knobbly. Um, normally, that, normally, homespun yarn of this level would be plied, so there would be two or three um, pieces of yarn to make a thicker yarn. So, drop it in, give it a poke. Pokety, 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 pokety. I know I'm cheating using my scissors. Like I said in the directions, you probably want a spoon for this. So I'll get out of here. And give it a poke. So, and if I pull this out, I'm already seeing that there's yellow on it, but it's not completely dyed. So if I take this out, and I 
rinse it. It looks like it's already dyed yellow. Take it out, I rinse it, and I'm rinsing it till there's no more color coming off. Okay. And I want to make sure I get all the turmeric off it. And you can see it's already a lighter color than that other string. It's already a kind of light yellow. And it will dry an even lighter color. So I'm going to just pop that back in there to get a darker color. And you can let this sit for however long you like. You can... Wait, right now it's a very light yellow. If you give it half an hour, it'll be a much darker yellow. If you leave it overnight, and if you do that, because you've got a food stuff, if you leave it with the egg in it, you should definitely refrigerate the liquid because you know you might want to eat the egg later. But you can leave it overnight to get a really dark color. So that's turmeric. As I said, it's a tablespoon of turmeric powder, two to three cups of boiling water, a heat safe glass or ceramic container, you're not worried about staining, your hard boiled eggs, yarn, beads, whatever, and a spoon. Now, if you happen to have um, handkerchiefs or anything else that's made out of either pure cotton or pure wool or any natural fiber, so linen, wool, cotton, um, something called Ramy, which is kind of a nettle fiber, um, alpaca, um, angora, mm -hmm. any of those things can be dyed with turmeric. After they've been washed a couple of times, they will start to lose color, but it will take quite a while. It's a fair, it's a very distinctive color. You can see, I only touch, I don't know if you can see this, but I only put my fingers in there and you can see that it's, it's stained my fingers a little bit. Okay. When you are done, you remove the items from the dye bath, you rinse off the excess too much. You can already see, yes, thank you. There's a little sludge at the bottom. And so that's gonna make your eggs come, your eggs and your things come out a little speckled because you're gonna get more turmeric in some places and less in others. Um, and then of course, you'll have to rinse the sludge out when you're done. And then you're going to hang them. If it's a string, you'll hang it to dry. Otherwise, you'll put it to dry um, someplace that'll keep it, you know, let it dry. So that's turmeric. The next thing, turmeric, we're going to, the next thing we're going to talk about is onion skins. Onion skins is a really simple dye stuff. It makes, depending on how long you boil, it can give you a brown or another brown or an orange. Um, and it's really easy to do. And you're actually upcycling something that would otherwise be thrown away. To do this, so let's talk a little bit more about that. It's a semi-fugitive dye. It gives a yellow, brown, or mahogany red. depending on how long you let it in here, or an orange. These are white eggs that are boiling in here. And if I let them boil for long enough, they will start to turn a dark mahogany red. Okay. The onion skins in your kit are just the dried skins of yellow, yellow regular cooking onions. The ones left behind in the onion bag, or if you go to the supermarket display and just like scoop all the onion skins out of the bottom. <laughs> Some people use additives with onion skins, such as vinegar, but they aren't really necessary because the tannins are so strong. Now, obviously dyeing eggs with, dyeing eggs is a Christian custom, as we said, but some Jewish people you dye eggs by hard boiling them with onion skins for a holiday in early so summer called Lag B. Omer. I think I pronounced it right, Lag B. Omer. Um, or Lagba Omer. Um, there's another tradition of taking either red onions, the skins of red onions, which give you a redder color, or the skins of yellow onions, and hard boiling them with, you know, 
or putting them in the pot and putting your eggs to cook overnight for the Sabbath meal among Jewish people. Um, and there's some links to that in the back of your pack and your packet. As I said, some people use vinegar as a mordant, but it doesn't it doesn't actually do a mordanting thing. It makes what you're what you're treating more likely to to accept the dye, but it doesn't help it bond. And with the tannins in here, it does, in the onion skin, it doesn't really make a difference. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our pot. Pot. We're going to dump our onion skins in there. We don't have to squish them. We don't have to do anything funny with them. We just have, and this is like two big, two good handfuls of onion skins. And then we're going to add some water. Now, what I found out was that if you make sure you kind of wiggle your pot a little as it cooks, you don't even have to have enough to cover. But since you're going to cook it for a long time, since you're going to cook it for a long time, I would recommend putting enough water in there to cover your eggs if you're using them. You can do the same thing with your bead. And obviously, the same thing with as I said, your yarn. If you haven't paid close attention to what's in your packet, you'll notice that there are three strands of each of the fibers. So you can put one in each. Okay. Whoops. Let me find the end of my fiber here. Aha. Okay. So I'm just going to pull it out. Normally, when you treat a large quantity of fibers, you make you wrap it like this, and then you would take a string and you would thread it through. So you would take a cotton string with the wool, put it around like this, and then take the next piece, crossing, and then when you're done, complete it. Um, tie it off so that you've tied off little subcategories, subsections of it. So I'm putting my string in. I'm putting my eggs in. I'm actually going to put three eggs in here. I could measure it, but I'm just going to run the water into it till it looks deep enough. There are some people who take their onion skins and cut shapes, or they use a string to wrap the onion skin around it to make a model appearance. And that's something you can choose to do if you find, if you think that's, you know, that sounds fun to you. Um, get my water in here. So as you can see, Put enough water in here, at least to start with, that my eggs are submerged. I'm going to put it on the stove for boil. And I'm going to bring it back to, once it comes to boil, I'll turn it down. Once it comes to boil, I'll turn it down to make, um, to a simmer. When I get the color I want, Suppose, here's my eggs. So, so suppose I decide that this is the color I want for my string. Should I, I actually have a pair of tongs here to get my string out with? If I decide that this is the color I want or a similar a color similar to what I want for my string, I can take it out <laughs> again. I'm going to rinse it in cold water. Some of the dye stuff is going to come off. 
So now it's an orange red. And then I can just hang it up to dry. Now, again, if you wanted to do a lot of wool, you would definitely want to tie it um, in, a, in that way that I was talking about because otherwise it will get tangled. But I'm just going to hang it up to dry with a little cup underneath it. And I'm going to put these back on here to see if I can get. Usually it takes at least half an hour to get the red. You, you see these are starting to get that red, that red brown. Jurgen, can they see it? It's starting to get that red brown color that I was talking about. So what we're going to do, we're going to put it back on the stove. Again, if I'm concerned, and I could be, about it boiling dry, I'm going to put a little more water in. Okay. So our last, use the other container for this one. Our last dye stuff is one that some people think is really, really cool. And some people are like, ew, that's gross. And that's cochineal. Cochineal produces, as you see here, on some things, a beautiful pink fuchsia. Gorgeous color. I love that color. Okay. However, it's actually, it's not a plant. It is naturally occurring, but it's not a plant. It's the exoskeleton. In other words, the, the outside body of insects that live on prickly pear, pear cactuses, primarily in Peru. Before cochineal was discovered in South America, people in Europe used something called kermes, which was another insect that grew on um, oak trees in Poland. You never know, do you? Let's get a good look at these guys. They're not gross at all. You wouldn't know they were bugs unless you knew they were bugs. So you can see this is the, the cochineal in quantity, and this is the individual cochineal shells. If you want to, you can squish these up with a mortar and pestle, but I found that I get really good results on almost everything without squishing. And you don't really need that much. So you've got probably a quarter teaspoon of cochineal in your packet and the little it's in a little white envelope okay you're gonna get a quarter teaspoon doesn't look like much does it we're just gonna pour that in there and we're gonna add water and you don't want to watch this carefully when you're boiling it because you don't really want to put that much water in there so I'm actually gonna put two and a half cups. And then I'm just gonna swirl my um, maybe three, depending on how big the pot is. Okay. There's only a certain amount of dye containing elements in each of these fibers and each of these things. So you'll get more pink and a, a, a stronger pink if you have less water. But we want to have at least enough water to boil our egg in, right? So I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it on the stove to come to a boil. As you can see, I protected my counters with cutting boards. You can choose to do that or not. Now, remember I said that there were chemicals you could use that could change the way things to be dyed take dye stuff. The vinegar is one of them. It's acidic. In fact, you know how when you do, for if you've ever done dyed Easter eggs or dyed anything else with um, food coloring, which is essentially what's an Easter egg dye, 
the recommendation is to add vinegar. That's because what are they're what are called acid dyes. They need acid to be activated fully. Now, if you've ever spilled food coloring on your hands, you know that they still stain pretty good even without vinegar. So what we gave you is about an eighth of a teaspoon of cream of tartar to make. And a lot of times when you're dyeing things, it's a good idea, especially if it's fabric or if it's yarn, you want to pre-wet it. Okay, so it's not wasting any time soaking up the dye bath. It's already wet. So what we did was we mixed, let me rinse this. We mixed the cream of tartar with about a cup and a half of water. And we soaked our string and our wooden bead in it. So we would get a better color. The cochineal, the cochineal that I've got boiling here is taking up some like some color right now. Um, I also have a dye back that I've used before. This is this is the liquid. If you let it boil and boil and you let it boil for about half an hour, this is the color you get. And I put a an ordinary egg in it about half an hour ago. So let's see what happens. It's pink. Let's see what happens when I rinse it off a little. Okay. We lose some of the color, but not much. Okay, and that's a cold dye. That's a cold dye bath. Okay. Um, let's go straight here. Let's see. Okay. Um, put that back in there. In a hot dye bath, it, it's going to take up color more quickly. Um, this is what it looked like. This is one that I did that I only left in for, oh, 15, 20 minutes in the hot dye bath. So that's the color we got. So I've got my pre-wetted fibers. I'm waiting for my coach to be able to take up color. And if you look, you can see it's already starting to turn pink. I can then add my egg at this point, or we can wait for it to get a darker color. Let me just show you. Now, the cochineal did not take very well on, oh, there's my pink string. The cochineal did not take very well. This is what it was like when we didn't put any cream of tartar. You can see a very faint pink on this cotton polyester yarn. The problem is probably the polyester. Polyester does not like to take dye stuffs except acid dye stuffs. This is a much darker, but I don't like it, um, a blackish color that I got by leaving it in the dye after it had cream of tartar in it for a long time and then rinsing it. But take a look at this wool fiber. Is that not pretty? This is um, hand spun, and we put it in the in the um, cochineal dye stuff, and I believe I left it overnight, and I got this color. But let's see what happens. I'm going to take our wood bead. We're going to take our wool, and you know what? I'm just going to. Put that pink, that cotton string back in there. And I'm going to put a couple of eggs. Let's see. You know what? I may think, I'm thinking that it's probably got a little bit more cochineal than that. In fact, I'm pretty sure you did. So let me put a little tiny bit more. Again, the amount of cochineal, the amount of the dye stuff, to a certain extent, the color of the results. Let's take a look at those other, you know, 
These have been boiling or simmering for about an hour. These are the eggs and you can see it's, it's a mahogany kind of red. And you could pull these out at any time, rinse them off. You have hard boiled eggs. You don't even have to start out with a hard boiled egg if you're gonna do the onion skins because you can just pull them out the way they are. Whoops, let me use my gun. This is a little lighter of an, or of an orange. I'm gonna rinse it. I'm gonna leave this back on the stove. <laughs> I beat it. And you can see not much color is coming off. There's my hard boiled red brown egg. Kind of pretty. I'd ask if you guys were here with me in person, I'd ask if you had any questions. But it's kind of hard for you to ask me questions because you're not here. Um, again, here's our pink. That's just the cold dye, and if I could leave this in here overnight, in a, or I can take this and put it in with the other egg in the hot dye. Yeah. Look at that. The other side's kind of white, so we're going to turn it over and let it even out but they're already making a beautiful pink. And we're already getting a pink, well, a brownish pink right now, on that wool. So we're gonna let that boil a while longer. So again, here are some onion skin dyed eggs and an onion skin dyed bead. This bead and these two eggs and this wool was all dyed with cochineal. Just put them in a yellow bowl so they can show off. And these were dyed with turmeric, turmeric. Whoops. Yellow egg, yellow bead. Whoops. My brown cotton string, my orange brown cotton string got away from me there. That goes over there. Let's just, before I, before I let you go, let's just take a quick look and see how our turmeric egg is going. Okay, give us a quick rinse. Nice yellow. Yeah, that's a good yellow. And our string is also turning yellow. So, and as you can see, because there's there's actual fragments of turmeric in here, it colors off differently. So we get a nice light yellow just from the amount of time it's spent in there. I also turn my fingers yellow. Again, if I want a darker yellow, Put it back in the dye bag, stick it in the fridge, take it out tomorrow. See if we can get a shot of it. You can try to get in the water. Okay. Here is our yellow bowl. This is again, I think it's a really nice bright color. I want to make sure, though, that I get all the turmeric out of it because otherwise it's still going to smell a little. It's going to smell a lot if I don't get most of the turmeric out of it. And, and of course, I probably didn't mispronouncing. I probably didn't mispronounce the turmeric the whole time. Okay. But we're getting a nice yellow. I'm going to rinse it some more. If you decide, and I'll show you this right now with this, if you decide you want to dye some white yarn, make sure you're, it's either pure cotton or pure wool. 
and not super wash world, because if you do super wash world, nothing's gonna happen to it. And if you wanna see how to tie some yarn up for that, let me just show you what I was saying before, okay? You've got your wool, you made it into a hank like this, okay? A circle. I'm gonna tie mine, I'm gonna put mine around my neck. You're gonna take a piece of string, this is cotton, so it's not going to stick to the wool. It's not going to become part of the wool. I'm going to take a piece of the cotton. This is color fast. Loop it around one piece of this. Cross. Then take the next piece. Cross it over again. Like so. Like a basket work. Okay. So once I've done that with all the strands, I've got this weird little braid going on. Weird little braid, whoops. There's the rest of mine, okay? I've got my weird little braid going on here and it should be an odd number because otherwise it gets weird, it, it untwists. So loopity, loopity, loopity. Tie it off. And then we move a third of the way at least. You know, we can do halfway around or a quarter of the way around or a third of the way around, but you definitely want to tie it in at least three places. Tie it with another piece of string. Again, same effect. And you can do, you can basket work one piece of thread first through there first, and then, you know, one piece and then do it on the other side. Like, yeah, like so, either way, whatever way works for you. But you do need to have it tied off in that basket weave. At least three loops. Tie it shut, tie it in at least three places. And then you can safely put this in so that it doesn't become one huge lump. You can put it in your dye stuff. Now, once you try dyeing things with the colors we've done, if you wanna save the dye stuff like I did here to use later, just put it in the fridge. Um, but be careful because, hey, that's a pretty pink. Just so you know, these are our pink eggs. Will you take a look at that? Beautiful. So we have pink, we have yellow, we have brown. The wood takes a lot longer to take up the color. So you'll want to soak that for a good deal longer. Okay. <laughs> there are lots of resources available in the handout. And with your kit about dyeing. We have access to a number of books about dyeing through the Hoopla Digital. Um, service on the library's website. We also can get you books from other libraries that are available on the uh, available from from other libraries in our consortium, and I have a list in here. Um, and the Creative Bug um, subscription service, which the library has a subscription to, that you can access with your library card, just like you can access the Hoopla digital eBooks. Um, has four different natural dyeing video projects that you can follow up on. Please remember when you, if you want to get into natural dyeing, please remember to be very careful and also Look up the ingredients you're using and make sure they're safe before you actually do the dyeing. Um, have a wonderful time. We'd love it if you could take pictures of anything you dye with this kit and send them to ref at plfdpl.info or post it to one of our social media sites. This 
recording is being placed on the library's YouTube channel for um, later access, and it should have a link to the handout for the class. Thank you very much, and have a lovely evening.